set up right now as far as teams go. So let's split them up let's that way. Up that. And then, um, then um, you guys will fight. Berserk, since you've been around for a while, I'd like you to let Razor's Edge take the point. He, you can give him tips and advice if you ask for it. And it'll be, uh, let's see, Degas, you've also been in the unit for a while, so let Studio take point. And Studio and Razor will lead their respective points. And then the two groups will fight. We're not going to do Forest Colony, though. We'll do a better map than that. Let's see. Let's do um, River City. That one's I knew it. <laughs> I was going to say, we just did it, and it's actually got some good tactics. Gives you guys some room to maneuver. We'll put time of day at day. Beautiful oh, so no, gonna, we're so in Razor trouble to go out. We'll, we'll strategize their two points. Figure out your yep. loadouts. 120 tons is the limit. And then your two groups will fight. They'll call the shots. If they want some advice, they can ask for it. But um, they're supposed to leave this. This is leadership practice. How's that sound, guys? Good. Oh boy. Whatever. Okay, any questions before we get started? None? Okay. Keep in mind there's a lot of, a lot of different pathing here you can take advantage of. The map is a lot larger than you initially think because there's all the borders that never get used in gaming. In 2v2s you have the unique advantage of being able to utilize those and you can also use it in 4v4 scouting. So this can be considered kind of a simulation for that. So we'll do a round of this, and then we'll do a second round. We'll swap leaders. First circus into Goss will lead at that point, and then um, time permitting, I'll kick first search back. You may try. <laughs> try, try, try. Not. Do it, do it. There is no try. Alrighty. Once everybody is readied up, we will drop. By the way, Berserks. Mm -hmm. that page on Facebook, you're right, that was me. I know. Alright, here we go. We're gonna move Razor and Berserks to Red Team. And then Studio and Degas will stay here in the trending channel. And I'll bounce back and forth between the two channels to get the different microphone chatters. Alright, moving now and then we'll launch. User was moved out of your channel. User was moved out of your channel. Launch all dogs! It's always easier to strategize with the other thing. Yep. I assume everybody have with I forgot to let everybody have a second to pick Max. I'm not thinking on my feet today. It's been a really, really long and bad work week. <laughs> oh, like, sorry I to hear that. Killed part of my training session. We'll pick it up in the next round. That's all right. I realized I was in a hell spawn, so I changed. I just saw both teams win 15. Like, oh, okay, they already matched everything. And I was like, wait a minute, they haven't had time to talk. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, we're in maintenance, so it's been tough this week because um, production has been deciding that maintenance is at fault for all, all of their production rows. I'm like, no, no, no. But that's not what they're <laughs> Yep, we always just say it works on our machines. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Ooh, dropship move. Chase that dropship. This is command. Eliminate all enemies, no matter the cost. Alright, studio, my loadout is all close range. All pulse lasers. <laughs> Alright, I've got uh, some mostly medium range here. Yeah, I'm not at all familiar with this map, so bear with me. No shame in that, just take your time. Interesting camo job on that mech. Yeah. Is it like a loyalty one? Yeah, it came out with the uh, supporter pack. Tournament supporter.
Well, at least you have ECM. Alright, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop channels. Be right back. Alright. Alright. You wanna go up on top of the Citadel? Channel switched. Hey, guys, I have joined your channel. Go away. Hello, user. Still nothing. <laughs> I know where they're at. I'm sure oh, I hope so. I'm not telling. <laughs> nothing. Surprisingly, the tunnel just ends and all the people die in this mass, massive sea. Wow, that looks like a force colony. I want to tell you to uh, come float down in front of my weapons so I can shoot you. But uh, I think I might need all my ammo. Do I? He's inside your cockpit, staring at your controls. You're inside his what? The cockpit of his mech. I was fiddling with all the knobs and switches, but he wasn't paying attention. I set it to self destruct. What do you think of that? I think that's a load of baloney. I got nothing, they're not here. Yep. Yeah. Unless I make one big giant circle, I guess. We could try doubling back and see about catching them in the front. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Oh, I think we're about to have contact if they do that. Two groups are definitely moving towards each other now. Berserk and his team have decided to double back and head them off at the pass. Meanwhile, Studio and Degas are using the height to look for their foes. Both teams are making fairly good strategy decisions. I cannot wait to get a more powerful computer. Any minute they should see each other, especially once they top out on the upper city park. I remember where all the geometries are, but uh, steps kind of fading into, into view. Got a lot of vacancies where there should be buildings. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, it sucks. Oh uh, no, he's looking in the wrong direction. They haven't seen each other yet. I got contact. Oh, there's contact. Contact what sector? Ooh, studio. Oh, e blood. seven. Red team draws first blood. They're gonna play a range game. Actually, the two teams are fairly balanced. Were they inside the tunnel or on top? Uh, he pulled back. He's behind the radar. Oh, I see them. They're up top. Looks like a medium or heavy. Good thing to see. Good. Looks like there's a heavy. Oh, two heavies, it looks like, maybe. Yep. I can't tell what one of them is, but one of them looks like it might be a summoner. Alright, yeah, they pushed towards a F7 line. They're on looks the like a summoner. So oh! Wait, you said the spawn's out, right, Nightmare? Artillery yeah, spawn is out. Is that a spawn? But only for pre-purchase, it's not out for sea bills. Oh, the hell spawn? That's a shitty mech, man. <laughs> it's a crab, not a spawn. Oh, purchase. there goes my left arm. They got a lot of firepower. Good old studio, front loading like a boss. Let's sit back and wait for them to come to us. I, uh, I can't poke, I have no range. Ooh, Berser explaining the sit and wait strategy. Studio is going to pick you apart. Let's see what Studio is doing. Swapping channels. Channel switched. And I'm back. Just doing a little poking here. Razor's definitely hurting. Berserk's pretty healthy, although he did lose his shield arm. Level critical. And of course, Degas is practically untouched. He might as well be Studio's bodyguard with all the meeting pulses while Studio holds off Berserks and Razor at range. What they don't realize is that Berserks and Degas have similar close range builds, although Berserks and MRMs do give him a little bit of an edge in range, while Studio and Razor are also playing the range game. The studio can do it a little more effectively with his front-loaded damage. Both teams, like I said, are pretty well balanced. 
the Berserks and Razor are going to have to push in closer. Otherwise, they have no hope of winning this match. They pop the UAV is smart to protect their position. But why would Studio push in when he has the advantage at range like this? Oh, you want to run over there and flush him out, or you want to stay? I say we should just go uh, get some face time with those guys. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's soften them up a little in. bit here. All right. Even if it throws away his advantage, he wants a satisfactory face time brawling fight. We'll see how that works out for them. I know how devastatingly powerful Berserks is in a close range fight, so it's not something I would recommend against a Centurion. Especially since Studio is so hot in that, in that um, Hellbringer. He won't be able to cool off very easily. He'll be struggling with oh, oh. one or two rallies. I don't know if I can get up there. Yeah, I can't. I run that build myself. <laughs> so I don't have too many concerns about his performance in that mag. But he won't be able to take Berserk's and Razor's edge by himself. Finds a circuitous route where we had some cover, but... There you go, Degas found a way up. Better hurry. Berserk's and Razor are going to flank and find them in a second. Let's see what they're saying. Wait. Channel switch. Oh, sweet. Yeah, see what I, what I fall right in behind them. Ooh, the trap is set. So swing right, wide or make a make a beeline up the cover. Uh, yeah, would I make a beeline straight left? I do not see them. Stay to the right of this building. I know where they're at. Ask me, ask me. And we're back into the circling NASCAR game. But Degas might see them if he turns around. As they're flitting from cover to cover, he might get lucky and get a ping. We'll see. He'd have to get fairly lucky to get that ping, though. Considering the terrain between them. Ooh, Berserk is wide out in the open, though. If they were to peek now, they'd probably ping him. Nope, nope, never mind. Razor is doable, though. But I don't think they're going... Nope, they're just behind too much cover. No ping. So now the two teams have effectively lost each other with 10 minutes and 40 seconds left on the match. Razor they should be straight ahead of to the radar. Trying to husband their armor that is remaining. Okay, here we go. Meanwhile, Studio and Degas are out for blood, having the taste of it in their mouth. They want more. They want a bigger bite. But whether or not they'll be able to get it is the question. The repositioning, they took a gamble, and they've lost the sight of their enemy. Got nothing. Meanwhile, Berserk and Razor yeah, Edge failed. are trying their best to flank. But having been wounded so grievously, they're hesitant to make the fast and bold, the faster and bolder moves they need to catch up. Come on, check tunnel. And here's Studio and Degas are about to walk out in the open. This is Berserk's and Razor's Edge, their team's chance to pick up Red Team. Nothing tunnel. Their sensors. But unfortunately, well, Razor is well, actually Razor is looking the right way. You're cutting out nightmare. Do what? I said you're cutting out. Yeah, I'm fixing to change channels to Studio and Degas. No, your your voice was dropping. Oh, okay. Sorry. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I hit shift by mistake. I was zooming the, the mic along and forgot shift is also my uh, push to talk. <laughs> I was running narration for the video, for the, for the training video. Gotcha. So I held shift for a second, let off, and that's why I cut in and out so fast. Alright, let's go ahead and push back down. They're probably watching that area right there. If you really have to know Berserks, I was r r repeatedly ramming your mech at high speed with my camera. Gotcha! Not really, not really. We'll see how it responds to that. Alright, once again they decide to reverse. 
It's not a bad strategy, but Studio <laughs> the Goss also decided to reverse. <laughs> oh, this is entertaining. All right, let's change channels. Channel switched. I am back. Hello. I am really enjoying watching y'all try to find each other. <laughs> like watching paint dry? Depends on how, how sweet smelling the things are. If you slow down just a little bit, I can cover you with ECM. Oh, sorry. I so got 81 open, KPH here. This is really amusing me. Berserks, good job. Crazy Ivan, check your back trail. But I failed to pick them up because of the intervening buildings. Yoss and Studio have the right idea of moving up into their flank, but of course they don't know they're moving into their flank because nobody has sighted the other team yet. Berserks and Razor's Edge are continuing to use cover very effectively to mask their movements. With only seven minutes left, they almost just need to bait Red Team with a couple of pings just to lure them in. Now is a really good time for them to go hit Red Team if they knew where they were, because Red Team is entering the lower city area close to Citadel. They won't be able to effectively use Studio One's long range on his Hellbringer, although it will be Degas's territory for his crap. Even so, it would really even the playing fields considering the firepower that Studio brings at range and put most All right, of the let's on there. onto the guys. Unfortunately, they have instead moved back to the other spawn point and they're moving through the city up towards Upper City. And so the dance continues. Each team, like a partner, rotating round and round on the dance floor of the map, which is Wrecked and ruined by war. I think I'll swing just a little bit to the right. Getting clever okay. in search. Unfortunately, you're on the wrong side of the map. And same thing goes for Razor and Berserks. They're running through the major intersection areas, just sweeping, splitting up now, just searching for paint. It's getting desperate with only five minutes left. But again, wrong side of the map. <laughs> Neither team really wants to go to the center, although they may find themselves doing that at the five minute mark. Degas and Studio now moving down toward the same track Berserks and Razor used just a few minutes ago, while Berserks and Razor position themselves in the upper city. There, Razor. Alright, they've doubled back again. We may actually start seeing some action here. They're going to be coming across this open spot. This is going to be Blue Team's chance to pick up pings. Oh, they swapped left. Man, well, they can still get some pings. Look right, look right. Are they even in the open where they can see them? Razor might pick him up. Berserks might pick him up. It's chancy. Uh, nope, they went around the far side of the citadel, so nobody's gonna get pings. Time to swap channels again. Channel switched. And back. Hello. I'm gonna check back in the mountains real quick. Alright, cover. You only have four minutes left. I know, tell them to hurry up and look for us. They have been. They've been very active looking for y'all. They're active, they're not in the mountains. Ooh, oh, I got, got hit, got hit. Across the way again? Drop back yeah, to cross cover. Yeah, across the river, across the river. Roger that, drop back to cover. 
and uh, I'm going to try to sneak up to position, try to cross the river without them noticing me. Three minutes left. Berserk makes a gutsy Don't move. keep trading. Oh, we got one one side over here. Crippled up. Tries to hold their There's attention. There's a medium. Well, Berserk moves toward Degas and Studio Are you? Point Blank. Yeah, Golf 5. We're about to see some significant mech action in the final three minutes of the match. Berserk's moving in with his limbed Centurion. No shield arm. MRM's an AC-20 at the ready. He sees them. He charges them. He fires at them. Crab. Twists to the side to spread damage and ducks Coming to you. Anyway. Oh, both of them. Both of them. He has both of them on him now. He's Golf 5, two trouble. minutes. Degas and Studio. Loki, eager for or Hellbringer, and a crab. Berserk's trying to use the barrels to protect himself, but unwittingly putting himself between the two of them. Meanwhile, Razor comes down to help him with Studio. Studio is taking significant damage, but Berserk is in trouble. Both he and Razor are 60% or lower on their health. Degas is fresh. 25% of the enemy are eliminated. Gauss gets Berserk with a We're wicked backstab. We Meanwhile, Razor's control. fighting for his life against Degas, and here comes Studio. That laser vomit had connected. That might have been the end of Razor. Goss not giving Razor any breathing space. Razor putting up a good fight. We go round and round using oil tanks while the Goss continues to chip away at Razor. To Come in, arm and the then serpent. his life. Can anyone read? Good job, to Goss. Well played, Studio. Good range battle, and then nice job finishing. Hey, I'm maybe next time. That was a good fight, guys. Well played. We're gonna jump up a channel. Yep. Right, that. User, User left was your moved channel. out of your channel. channel switched. Hey guys. Hello. Good fight. All right, you guys want to hear a recap from the spectators' perspective? Yes. Too All much right. cat and mouse. We'll start with Team One: strengths and weaknesses. First off, before I do that, let me say both teams are pretty evenly balanced in their mechs. Razor had large pulse and Goss, which gives him pretty decent range. Berserks had MRMs and AC-20, which up close, you can get most of his MRMs in one component, makes him a nasty brawler. Team 2, Studio, had a long-range Hellbringer with heavy lasers and ER mediums. Lots of upfront laser vomit, very hot mech. Higher pinpoint damage than Razor, but probably less sustained DPS since he has to step back to cool off. Degas, of course, running the medium pulse crab, which I happen to actually run and enjoy myself. Makes for a very nasty, tanky brawler as well. So we had basically one ranged mech and one brawling bodyguard on each team. Both teams roughly equivalent in speed as well. So mech-wise, these teams I think were pretty well balanced. Now as far as tactics go, um, starting with Team 1, as you guys rotating around the map, you did a pretty good job scouting, using high points to um, take advantage to look for enemy pings, enemy contact. Y'all did a pretty good job sweeping for targets. Um, nothing really to complain about with that. Um, you guys changed direction a couple times. You were watching your back trail. You guys were really vigilant. Good job on that. When it comes to fighting, y'all decided to sit back and wait, which is not a problem in and of itself, except that after the initial engagement, Studio made it clear that he had the range advantage over Razor. While they both had good ranged mechs, Studio's significant laser vomit at range lets him vomit more damage in the step back behind cover to cool off, whereas Razor has to try to get more shots in with his Gauss and Pulse to make up the difference. So in a, in a range exchange, Razor, would, his mech would lose out to Studio's just because of the peaking, poking nature of it. If they were in more open ground, then Razor would probably beat Studio because Studio would not have the necessary cover to hide behind to cool off. Make sense? Yep. yep. Okay. So my critique on the initial engagement is that y'all sat still for a little too long. What happened was, after waiting so long, y'all took a lot more damage than need be. Berserk's losing his shield arm, Razor tanking a lot of damage to his three torsos. And um, so y'all were weaker than necessary when you went into the second engagement. Um, on top of that, once you decided to move, Team 2 became impatient, which I'll get to that in a minute. 
and they started looking for y'all as well. So what wound up happening is you two started circling the map over and over and over and over and over, which was very amusing to me as a spectator. Um, but then also, you guys reversed directions at the same time, which was also really amusing to me. <laughs> Shit. I'm watching you guys, and I'm like, they're going around again. Oh, wait, they're reversed. We're going to have a cup. Nope, never mind. The other team also reversed. <laughs> like, they're going back in the other direction now. I mean, well, I saw them on, we saw them on radar, so we just decided to rush them before they could get away from us again. Yeah, I figured with four minutes left, somebody's going to pick up a pin and they're just going to go at it. Um, but as far as the map movement between the first and second engagements, um, both teams did, did a good job traversing the map, using cover, looking for pings. I mean, no issues with that. In fact, they might have been too good because it took you all most of the time to find each other again. But um, that was well played. Let's see. As far as the second engagement goes, um, staying with Team 1 for now, once you all picked them up, you had a good idea trying to lure them in while the close range of the terrain ambushes them. The problem is that Berserk moved in a little too fast. Degas wasn't in a strong position to help him, and so they got cut up, and um, of course they got taken out one at a time. It might have been better for Berserk to bunker down in the buildings and wait for them to come up the street a little ways. Other than that, Berserk and um, Razor, you both did a good job getting your shots in and maneuvering when you were in the fight and uh, spread damage fairly well and you did what you could. It's just hard to fight two versus one in that scenario. Any questions from Team 1? Nope. Any nope. comments, disagreements, other observations? I don't think you're really spectating. I couldn't see the entire match. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was right behind you eating cookies. Alright, so Team 2. Um, a lot of the same stuff applies to y'all. Like I said, good vigilance, good traversing the map. I mean, no issues with any of that. So I'm going to skip that since we already kind of talked about it. And I'm going to go straight to Engagement 1 and Engagement 2. So Engagement 1, when y'all were on the um, aerospace port, y'all did a really good job trading at range. Degas did a good job of just staying hidden. Berserk and Razor couldn't figure out what mech he had. They thought it was a Hellspawn initially. So good job not tipping your hand too early. Also, good job conserving your armor, because you were going to need it if it got into a close range advantage. You're the only brawler your team has, that makes you the bodyguard. Yep, so, I was just sitting in the dugout waiting to back clean up. Exactly, you did excellent at that. That's exactly what you need to do as a brawling crab. Let Studio with his range, duke out at range, let him do the trade. You guys figure out what you gotta do from there based on whether you're winning or losing the trade. But don't take unnecessary damage, don't reveal what you got, don't let them know until you have to. So that was well played on your team's part. Studio, very good job trading. That's a very powerful front-loaded mech and is frightening. Um, you were extremely hot, but you were able to manage that heat well and, and dish out significant damage, which put Team 1 at a major, major disadvantage. So that's excellent. My only critique on the first engagement was that you all abandoned your position a little too quickly. Uh, had you stayed in that position a little longer, you would have seen Team 2 cross the water when they tried to flank around behind you, and you could have rotated your your battle line to the left a little bit in order to meet them as they came from the Citadel. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. If you'd done that, they would have come up from the Citadel, and depending on what path they took, might have been shooting, might have been like shooting ducks in a barrel. Right. See, we thought they were still hanging out up there on the on the high ground, so we. We advanced under cover, and that gave them the opportunity to trade positions with us. Exactly. Once you started moving, they slipped out. They actually saw y'all trading positions, and so they tried to flank, but they didn't make it in time. Y'all moved out from that position. Um, the only reason why that was not quite as good of an idea, why I think y'all, I mean, it worked out for y'all in the end, uh, but it could have ended badly because Studio's design is more of a move and defend, move and defend kind of mag. It's not so much a getting close and brawl at mag. And when you, I was in y'all's comms, you guys decided to push in and, and go fight them up in the upper city. So movement itself is not wrong or bad with your team's loadouts. The intent to get into the upper city to fight them at closer range was a mistake though. Because had they sat there and waited, y'all would have pushed in and Studio's um, Hellbringer is so hot, he would have been able to fire once or twice maybe. Is that right, Studio? Uh, yeah, two alphas. Two alphas. So he would have got two shots in, and then he would not have been able to fight, which means that if those two alphas did not kill either Berserk or Razor, then it would have all been on Degas. It would have been up to him to win, win the fight. Because by the time the studio cooled off, one of them, him or Degas, would be dead. I know Berserk and Razor would not have let them live through that cooldown period. 
So that was a very, very, very risky gamble. You're trading a very powerful advantage um, for really nothing in return, although it would have been a lot of fun to brawl them up front. Well, um, so. yeah, I mean, plus I, I wasn't involved, right? Right. So. You weren't involved, but at the same time, given your team's configuration, that actually was good. If you were yeah, involved, if we'd still if we'd stayed on the if we'd still stayed in the spaceport and they and they had came up on the on the flank, then we would have been able to turn and engage. Exactly. And I could have gotten close and used my maneuverability and my firepower to exactly. open them up while Studio laid laid back and. Uh, and dealt damage from range. Once they circled around, you could have interdicted them. Studio could have continued firing, and y'all would have been able to probably mess them up pretty badly. Or you could have traded, and then realizing they weren't in Upper City, you could have taken up a position in Upper City where you have a really good vantage point. It's actually a very strong defensive point. And you could have looked out across the water or down into the lower city portion and watched for them to see where they were coming from. And that also would have been a similar situation where now you've traded, you're out of the position, they're looking for you in the wrong place, and boom, you can ambush from the side. So just a couple of things to think about. Um, and then, of course, the second engagement, you all played it very well. You stayed tight, you moved together. Degas, you covered Studio when he got too hot. And in the end, you guys smoked him. Oh, and also, congrats on the double kill, Degas. Oh, thanks, man. All right, any questions or comments, guys? Yeah, so when we have such a range difference, you know, I don't want to separate too far from the goss so how do I, how do you plan that out where i can you, you know what i'm saying my rule of thumb is 500 meters or one sector grid on the map because sector grids can vary in size depending on which map you're playing but so general rule of thumb is stay within 500 meters because you can get back within just a few seconds or one sector grid because again it's just a few seconds difference you want to be close enough that if one of you gets into trouble, the other one can be there almost immediately, be yet far enough apart that if one of you gets into trouble, the other one's not immediately ensnared. Make sense? Yeah, it does. Thanks. No problem. When Berserks and I play, I always tell him, stay close to me, 500 meters, and then he sits like 10 meters in front of me and I constantly run into him. <laughs> or he zigzags in front of my line of fire. I have videos of him doing that. All right, do you guys want to go another round, or do you have time? It's up to y'all. Yeah, I have time. Okay. That's fine. Uh, so you guys take a few minutes. I'm going to split you guys up into teams again. This time, I'm going to give you more time to organize your drops. Um, Berserk and Degas, y'all take point on this one. I'm going to split you guys up now. User was moved out of your channel. User was moved out of your channel. Be back in just a second. All right, so... Uh, what do we want to take as far as loadouts? Do you want to go with the same thing, or do you want to mix it up on them? I really don't have a lot of mechs, but I oh. do want to make a change. Uh, I mean, I can go with something that has more range. Or it, It's really up to you. I'm so new at this, I'm, I'm st still trying to not run into building. <laughs> Um, okay, let me see, uh, how that would help. I might go with another crab and I'll just go with, uh, two large and three me ER mediums in that way. I'll have some range. I won't have as much punch close up, though. And then how do I get back to modifying my mech? I don't think you can do it from here without leaving. But I think you're just stuck with whatever loadout mech has. So do you think I should go with a crab that has more range, or should we go with SRMs, or go just stay with the same one? You know, it's, um, that's fine to stay. You know, if you're comfortable with that, then uh, then we can, like, can just separate ourselves a little bit more, like Nightmare says, and maybe take advantage of both of our strengths. Okay. I, I'm. 
I'm leery to take the exact same configuration, but um, close range. All right, I'm gonna stick with the crab. Might go with the one that has a little more range. We'll of course, if it comes to a brawl, then we might be at a disadvantage. Yeah, I'm just gonna drop one of my medium lasers here. That helps me cool down a little bit. I don't overdo it. Okay. I'm gonna stay with the same mech then. Dude, you, you're gone. <laughs> And I'll be back shortly. Okay. I'm back, sorry for the delay, guys. <clears throat> no worries, I had to figure out how to get out of the lobby so I could change my mech. Oh, 10 4. Um, let me check on the other team real quick. I'll be back. I'm bringing a cataphract to uh, front load firepower. Cataphract and front load. Alright. Yeah, open. front load is in front end loader yeah. to get yeah. my cataphracts that fell over. I heard they come out with a bulldozer attachment for the cat. I would like that. <laughs> How we lose one? Um, studio's here. He just had to drop drop lab uh, drop lobby so you could go to the lab. He needed to tweak something in one of his builds. That's not allowed. You gotta come in here and do what you got. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing. If you guys want, you can drop lobby and go tweak as well. Of course, if I went to the mech lab, I'd be there for 30 minutes or so. Everybody except Berserks. I'd be going, <laughs> going, or I'd be going through mechs going, what yeah. engine does this thing have? It's like when you're a little child, we would, oh, where's Clayton? We sent him back to put the clothes away and we went by there and all the Legos were on the floor. It's like, why are all the Legos on the floor? I couldn't help it. They're in the closet when I opened up to hang the shirts up. <laughs> They called to me, whispering. I just had to see what they looked like again. The Legos? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't want to forget what my Legos looked like. I hear that. Alright, looks like we're about ready to drop. And Berserks, you're taking point this time, and Degas on the other team. Let me check in on them. Roger right that. Channel switch. Alright guys, you set? I am. Um, i just waiting for Degas here. 10-4. Degas, you're the team leader this time around, and once Berserk is ready, we will launch. Saying the lobby encountered an error, contact support code 42, but it launched anyway, so I think we're okay. Are yeah, you with us, Dagon? I think we lost Dagos. Dagos! Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> you know, I get that same feeling whenever somebody crits my goss. I'm like, I lost Dagos! <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, this is 
command. Eliminate all enemies, no matter the cost. Hawaiian cataphract with fangs, I like it. And a Nova with triple Alright, let's uh, see if we can head for some high ground and try to employ Nightmare's notes on our strategy. That is an interesting loadout on the cataphract. And I like the Nova build, but the triple AMS might not be effective against these other mechs. Let's see what they are running. Your mediums and heavy largest. What's your speed, Studio? Studio says if it ain't break, 81. Broke, don't fix okay. it. And the Goss and his crab also, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. No change for Team 2. The significant changes for Team 1. Let's see how that works for them. Alright, you see the jets. Ooh, we can't kind of see. We can't die. Flat. They're two dimensional. The jets are two dimensional. They're not real. You're cutting out nine. Oh, sorry. I was having commentary for the video. I was commenting how the fighter jets overhead are actually two dimensional. Damn, I, lost I didn't sign my photo release to be published on the video. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you serious? No, I'm joking. Okay, I just want to make sure, because I have had one guy in the past who didn't want to be video, and then I, I turned it off out of deference to him. Most people that play games don't care, so I kind of just assume, but I probably should never assume. I should probably ask. Man, I really, really like Berserk's paint job. Splitting up, probably to maximize their coverage. We'll see if that works for them this time, considering how it turned out last time. Degas and Studio playing the same strategy oh, as last time. Dangerous in reverse. He's maxed out of a rear view mirror. Key Master, they had rear facing weapons. Like I know, that'd be awesome. It'd be awful. I I have a hard enough time controlling what I hate. Think of all the scrubs in the group queue that be firing weapons out the back of the Oh back my gosh, started. right? You wouldn't be able to be behind or in front well, of anyone. Test my weapons to see how hot they are. Boom! And you get like a ER, you get like a, a large heavy clan laser to your rear torso. So you yeah, <laughs> dual small lasers to your eyeball. That would be awful, wouldn't it? That's how I see replacing weapons being used. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oops. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I was just testing my heat. Oops, I didn't realize when I alpha it would fire the rear ones too. Yeah, I mean, really. People would do that. <laughs> Berserks and Razor playing very conservatively here. Zoom through the arch. Same with Studio and Degas. Instead of both teams looping around the map to find each other, fruitlessly, what we have are both teams camping, waiting for the other one to come to them. These guys are so evenly matched, it's not even funny. Their their builds are synergized fairly well. Somebody should call about they this gas pipe. Similar, contact, G7. Oop, they got a contact, finally. I going to say they have similar range and they have similar strategies. Oh, sorry, like golf. Each minds. They have contact, time to jump channels and see if Berserks and Razor have made them. It looks the like they might have. Let's find out. Fox 5 Echo 5. Yes, Berserks is Upper coming. Upper City Fox 5 Echo 5. Do not expose yourself. I'm gonna fall back. Do not expose yourself. It was, uh, I think it was the Hellbringer sitting over me. Berserks is a very cautious drop caller. I'm going to try to retreat back oh, towards Fox 8 without taking fire. In, when he's fighting himself. It's actually kind of at odds. He's, he's a good job caller and he's careful, but when he's the soldier instead of the commander, he throws all caution to the wind and just brutally assaults anything nearby with his mech. Hence his name, Berserks. Because he goes Berserk in the battlefield. I think that's a cool paint scheme. Alright, let's check in on the studio's team. Studio and Degas are over here. I think they're still there. Oh, it's just cute. Studio's the king crab, right, uh, crab fix right under there. Once again, Studio and 
the Goss trying to play the range game. I haven't seen any movement. Versus oh, they're there. Razor's edge, see not wanting to give in to Looks that. Looks like they're coming for the bridge. I'm going to sit tight here for a moment, let them move. Coming from the bridge in what? Echo 6? Uh, yeah, they were in Echo 5, Echo 6 area, I think. We have a staring contest. Alright, copy. Instead of coming to you. playing NASCAR, like they're right just the sitting and staring. Both teams have similar thoughts, similar strategies, and they Moving up a little bit closer. Well. Or perhaps they mesh too well, depending on how you look at it. Wrong button. There's the map, so you can watch the overlay. As you can see, they're positioned directly across from each other. <coughs> Jets are still flying overhead. I would say, once again, Studio's team probably has the range advantage. Artillery strike online. Once again, Berserk has brought an AC-20, which is a short-range weapon, along with medium lasers. His larges are the only ranged weapons. They are still across the river waiting. That means his team is at a significant range I advantage. I didn't see it, He's hoping... Not like, yeah, the Hellbringer looked right at me. He's really hoping oh. they're going to come across and engage close range like they did pull last back. time. I don't have that kind the of studio range. and the Goss have taken my critiques to heart and are camping, waiting, and using studio's range advantage to their benefit. Berserks doesn't want to cross the open ground and take the hit, so he keeps repositioning, but there's really nothing he can do. They're going to have to cross. He's still there. Don't poke. Alright. I'm going to pull back and, uh... Make a circling move. Um, they're probably just gonna wait and let the clock run down. There you go, Burster. Now you're starting to get the right idea. That's exactly what Studio should do in Degas in this situation. They have a very strong defensive position. They have the same mechs that they had last match, which means okay. has a I cannot reach them. long range ability compared to. He knows to I'm out of range. There's nothing they can do against it, they're gonna have to get close. Once they get close, they can 2v1 against Degas and kill him since he is the bodyguard with all those medium pulse lasers. After that, Studio will be at the mercy. And there's no handy dandy convenient way up here. Circle back around. Go ahead, jump Show off your jump jets. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make your own way sometimes. Let's check on Red Team. All right, I think I'm gonna back up a little bit here. So Razor's trying for a long flank while Berserks stands guard and watches. Studio is watching Berserks, Berserks is watching Studio, Degas is running back and forth checking for the flank that Razor is currently trying to execute. Or so it seems anyways. There's no real chatter, so it's kind of hard to guess. Both teams are sitting and waiting. Berserk's hoping that... <laughs> Get over here. Berserk's hoping that they will lose patience and move in and sacrifice the range of enemies. Berserk's is taunting us. Well, of course, Studio wants them yeah, to move in. Yeah, it looks like he had PPCs, too. Ooh, they have completely misjudged Berserk's He's trying to beat us at the range game. That's what he should have done, but he didn't. Oh, I saw PPCs. It was just lasers firing up into. Well, Berserk's just punched holes in their theory that he had PPCs if they take him seriously. But I'd be curious to see if they do. I certainly wouldn't, seeing that kind of language. But it's ironic because it is the truth. He does not have weapons that can hit them there. That is a really cool paint scheme. Stomps the back. 
Are you watching our backside? I am. Good job, Studio. Reminding Degas. Good job, Degas. Already all over it. Sir, you're actually playing a little too cautiously now, in my opinion. Under the bridge, through the woods, to grandmother's house we go. It's in flames, but who cares? And no change for Stuthian Degas. They have infinite patience, it seems. Not willing to sacrifice their range advantage, they continue to hold their ground. I happen to know Berserks is an impatient player by nature. He's not this patient, typically. He really, 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 really must want to win in order to hold himself back like this. I know any minute he's going to start moving forward like he is. He's going to have to get closer. He's going to have to go fight because he can't stand to sit still. Goss doing a very good job running to and fro, checking for flanks, studio, watching the front 180 degree arc, ready to hit anything that moves with an overwhelming amount of laser fire. Honestly, I think studio and them are going to win this one if they stay where they're at. Berserk will get impatient and move in, studio will munch them with his lasers, and Degas will crunch whatever's left. They could try moving in closer, circling a little bit, going for the side, toward the citadel. That would also work if they moved to the right and just worked along the waterfront. They still have a range advantage. I'll be UAV on this end, so if they come, we'll be able to see them. Then I'll just watch out over here to, to the uh, F5, F4 side. Not a bad idea, though. You might have wanted to save four. that UAV for three minutes. Because right now they're not under fire, but close to the time you know they're going to be pushing in, so that's when you want to use the UAVs. So I just uh, saw movement. Backside of Fox 6. Get Eye Studio. So if they move down the right side, I'm trying to remember how to get the mouse pointer on here. Is it P for pointer? Is they've it moved right? around closer to the Citadel. Alright, so as you can see the mouse pointer, they move right down the water's line Ten four. over here. Alright, I gotta get rid of the pointer to rotate the camera. There we go. They move down the water line like this. They still maintain the range advantage because they keep this expanse of water between them and the enemy, and it gives them firing options and repositioning. They've waited so long now that Berserks and Razor are now in this, to the safety of the tanks, though, so that strategy won't work. Had they employed it earlier in the match, they could have rotated around and rotated up here. I mean, they could have kept the range advantage this whole path that I'm tracing with the mouse all the way through there, and that would have let them get all the shots in that they probably need and would have probably chased Berserk and Razor up into the city over here. They could have then backtracked up to here and, you know, Berserk and them would have been at a major disadvantage in terms of damage. But now they're crossing down here and they're going to use that same strategy against Studio and Degas. They're going to use the buildings this time as cover to slip up. And it doesn't seem that Studio or Degas are aware that they have crossed the water. Very good play on Berserk's part. Let's see if they can make good on it. Nightmare, did you fall asleep? Nope. I'm paddling on to the viewers. <laughs> Great. Oh, this is an interesting match. Don't worry. Degas is looking to the right. He has the right idea, but he's looking the wrong way now. Berserk's and Razor making a very, very nicely executed flank using buildings as cover. I think we... I think we're going to see some action here. If they are able to keep this up. Ooh, Degas is moving back. Oh. Whoa, UAV expire? Them. I guess it did. Nope, nope. He's moving to go check on the other side. He's out of position. This is Berserk's chance to push in. If he goes now, then he, they will take Studio and Degas completely blindsided. Ooh, this is going to be good. Let's go check on Berserk's channel. Channel switched. Hello. I'm back. Are they Hello, just user. sitting there? Yeah, they're just sitting there. Ooh, contact. Got us. Now Crap. Now each other's at. Back. Berserks and Razor almost made it all the way up. Berserks can't seem to clear. Okay, move left right. side. He's clipping like crazy. Fox 4, Echo 4, left side. 
come up together. We'll focus fire on the crab. Student Goss holding their ground. Studio a moment too late to catch Razor's edge as he runs up. Still looking to make sure there's no flank. Smart move, but in this case it might cost them. It's the proper move, but switching to not heat vision so I can pick him out. Ooh, he's hiding, waiting for the moment, but he's giving up the range advantage. He's gonna get one shot on Razor. Oh, we got a big one. One yep, shot I saw. on Razor. Take a shot to recover. Degas and Burst are actually going at it. Crab. This is an uneven match between the two. Focus crab. Has the advantage with yeah, yeah, focus crab. Focus crab. Focus crab. Focus crab. Flank around the other side of the door. Degas ah, shoot. Trouble. I overheated. I overheated. Ooh, but he overheated. Burst is overheated. This is. Oh, Degas didn't fire. That was his chance to nail. I got big one on my back. I got big one on my back. Turn around. Coming, coming, coming. Keep running, keep running, keep running. Goss. I don't know if he waited too long trying for a headshot or if he was too hot to fire or what, but that was his chance to shoot. Flank him back around. Uh oh. Studio's going for distance. He's too hot. Shows Berserk his back. Eats damage. Turns to fire. But he's damaged. He's hurting. Berserk down to 77%. Studio at 66. This match is going to be over very soon. Razor coming in for the flank. This is done. Studio is going to eat up. He has put up a terrific fight. He's done a very good job. Against two mechs and the mech got hot. There's not a whole lot he can do. His bodyguard is dead. So nice job. Well played to both teams. Good, good strategies. Good, good amount of patience nice to both sides. Well done to Berserk and Razor on their flank. Beautifully executed. Beautifully done. <laughs> yeah, they just sat there the entire time. I'm not actually speaking to them. That just happens to dovetail very well with what I said. User was moved out of your channel. User was moved out of your channel. Hey guys, hello. Good game, guys. Hey, that was a good game, guys. That was a great fight. That was good. Well played by yeah. both teams. That that's exactly what uh, Nightmare was talking about last time, where you engage us with the cataphract with all the armor, and then the Nova just stood back and and uh, took targets of opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was doing. So, are you guys ready for the critique? Sure. All right. Starting with team. Well, again, first off, both teams did really well with their with their um, observations, with their movements. No real issues with that. Uh, I got some critiques for team two that are related to that, but we'll get to that. But in general, I both studio teams was a tree there after uh, after about five minutes of watching him not moving. <laughs> really? It's like is, is is that a tree I'm looking at? Wow. He hasn't moved. All right. Well, first off, team one. So y'all brought some interesting mechs, a 6 ER medium Nova with triple AMS, and then of course the Cataphrat with two large, two mediums, and an AC-20. Um, and a standard so, engine. Do what? And a standard engine. I wasn't going to repeat that uh, XL mistake. We know there's light fusions now, right? Yeah, but I haven't played enough to uh, own a light fusion. 10-4. Alright, so money. interesting builds all around. Yeah, I like the way uh, the cataphract had the pirate stick over his cockpit so you couldn't tell where to shoot him. Yeah, I was <laughs> I actually going to get to that, but I, when he shut down in front of me, I, I was watching, I was like, this is game, Degas has Berserks, and then he sat there and Berserks powered up and killed you. I was like, I don't know what just happened, but Degas just missed a chance. <laughs> I did, but as soon as I finally decided where I was going to shoot him, he woke back up and pivoted away. Remember, you only have yep. like a second or two before he powers up, so if you don't instantly see the cockpit, just yeah. go for the most damaged component and keep moving. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> All right, so team one, first off, interesting loadouts, good synergy, no complaints about that. Your strategy, though, was not very strong early match. Actually, for most of the match, to be honest. You guys also. have close to mid-range mechs, an AC-20, for example, and medium lasers. While Studio and um, Degas brought the same mechs they had as last time. So once again, Studio overwhelms you guys at range. And then Degas plays a strong bodyguard backup. And you guys chose to stay at range and peek at them to try to entice them closer. 
but um, that just wasn't going to happen. You guys played a very, very dangerous gamble where had Studio been able to get in a solid Alpha Striker range, you guys would have been significantly damaged and significantly disadvantaged once you closed. Now, for the second half of the fight, when you guys executed your flank, you did that perfectly. That was beautiful. That flank all the way across behind the, tur behind the tanks, up the backfield through the rear lines of the city, that was very well done. And we finally decided to do that once we realized that they weren't going to uh, weren't going to change position. You almost waited too long to do it, but it came at the perfect moment because at that exact moment, uh, coincidence struck, and Degas's two-minute UAV expired as you guys were coming up the city line. So he left his post, which I'm going to get to that in a minute. He left his post and went to the far side to check the other side of the city and gave you guys even more time to walk up on him. So you guys, really no complaints about your performance. Um, I think your static long-range gameplay had a, was a significant gamble that could have hurt you badly. The studio and Degas have been a little more mobile. Um, I was I was honestly kind of hoping that they would uh, that he would get some pot shots on me, and uh, hopefully, after, if he shot me a couple times, try to move forward. That's what we're trying to go for. Yeah, I understand what you're talking about, but that was a very dangerous gamble. I mean, that could have turned out very badly for y'all. Um, the only other thing I would say is the triple AMS on the Nova, um, obviously not effective against energy mechs. That was also a gamble as to whether they would have missiles or not. Uh, although I also get raised where you said you were going to run what you brought, which is also cool. So no, no complaints about that. Yeah, and, uh, we're just running field ready mechs. Yeah, in a, in a competitive match, you may want to consider changing that out. Um, let's see. Team, or first, before I go to Team 2, any thoughts, complaints, disagreements, questions from Team 1? Nope. Razor? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go to team two. Well, one one mild disagreement. Yep. The uh, uh, the strategy wasn't weak. We didn't really have much of a strategy aside from try to get them to move because <laughs> we didn't think we were going to, be able okay. to we, we didn't think we were going to be able to charge them effectively. Um, once I realized that Studio was literally just sitting in that one spot and uh, not moving at all, I realized that we had a very clear shot at running up to the city. But because of the firing lanes in the city on their side of the map, I didn't want to try and uh, didn't want to try and make a push up the city, e even if we came from that side just yet, because I figured he would uh, set up with nice firing lanes. That's why we're trying to entice them to come over to us. I totally understand that. I, I really do. I'm just saying, like, uh, let's say he had changed that out for ER larges instead of heavy lasers and ER mediums. He could have been hitting you guys out there, and you would have been taking. Oh, uh, I thought they were ER larges. No, I was wondering why he wasn't shooting. The only reason why he didn't hit you when you're out there is because he had heavy larges. If they'd been gotcha. ERs, he'd have been chewing you guys up. Yeah, that's why I was giving myself exposure. I was trying to get him to shoot me and Tyson yeah. would come over. Those heavy larges do what? 18 damage? Studio? Correct. Yeah, so that's 32 points of damage between two lasers, Berserks. Okay. Plus all the ER mediums. That's why I'm like, his long range firepower was utterly overwhelming against you two. So that's why I said it was a really, really risky gamble. But it worked. Yeah, he was running ER larges the whole time. No. <laughs> if they were ER larges, he would have been pot shotting you guys the whole time. Yeah, He, he could hit you in and out virtually with those ER larges. Yeah, so we saw you guys moving in a, sort of a clockwise. Because we saw you in the city, then we saw you by the Citadel. So I figured you were going to come up at us from that direction. And... Uh, when you did come, I I was I couldn't my I, don't, I couldn't get any shots over the edge. That's what I was hoping. That's why I went through the Fox Four ramp instead of the uh, the collapse bridge. Yeah. So I was I was expecting to um expecting to be able to use that that high ridge in the middle and the buildings between us. Which brings me to critique for Team Two. So Team Two took the critiques from the first match to heart and used them to their advantage, which is great. They took the high ground in the upper city, gave them a very strong defensive area, and they did initially a really good job, Degas did, of checking the area around them in the studio of watching Berserks and his team move. The problem, though, is they stayed static for a little too long. I mean, even if you have a really strong position, you don't want to stay there the entire match. Because what happens is it gives your enemy time to think, to take control of the tactical initiative, and to come up with a plan to get you out of it. You want to try to keep them on edge. So. In the video, yeah. I made a critique, and what you could have done is if you move to your right down toward the waterfront, you could have moved around the waterfront 
right on the edge of the water, keeping those buildings between you and the citadel. First off, I should I should ask this earlier, but everybody knows what the citadel is, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I should have asked that previously. Um, but anyways, you could have moved down along the waterfront, keeping the buildings between you and the citadel. That gives you lots of openings to shoot through while also protecting your cover and your range advantage because they have to get across all the open water to get to you. That would have given you a lot more angle to shoot them and uh, probably would have improved your chances at hitting them as well as improving your chance of keeping them off balance because now you're moving and they're having to sit there and think, oh wait, shoot, you know, he's out of position. We got to figure out another way to go at him because we're automatically at a disadvantage since he outranges us. Does that make sense? Or since they bailed on the spaceport and moved off, we could have moved across and taken a position on the spaceport again. Exactly. They that was also the biggest able to fear. Shoot down onto you the spaceport. How in the world were we going to be able to attack the spaceport? Yeah, with them in the lower city, close to the citadel, the spaceport would have been a strong advantage against them as well. So you all had a couple of advantages, uh, a couple of paths, I should say, that you could have taken. You chose to camp, which is, f which really is fine. It's not really an issue. Except that late game, you guys got a little sloppy with your with your vantage points. Um, and the reason why I say that is you guys trusted a little too much to the UAV. Um, it's helpful, it gives you about two minutes of coverage. But if you don't watch that side, you don't really see anybody moving. You only know um, it's what, 360 meters around the UAV? Right. So you really only know a, a diameter of 360 meters. They could slip around that. They could come up um, close to that and then camp and wait for it to for it to shut down. Yeah, I just used it to to give me a a tip if they were coming from that direction, and I would watch the other side. Right. But but when it expired, then I was covering both areas, and I was out of position when they did make their rush. Exactly. But back to what I'm saying about the UAV is 180 meter radius. So what I've done in the past is when I'm sneaking up on somebody, I see their UAV. I put my targeting reticle on it, and at 200 meters away from it, I'll stop moving. I'm outside the range, but I'm 200 meters from wherever they're camped. Does that make sense? Yeah. When the UAV powers down and it drops to the ground, that's what I do then. Because now I know they're blind. And they think it's safe because the UAV didn't pick anything up, but they don't know that I'm sitting there 200 meters and, you know, three or four seconds away from them. So that was a risky gamble. Of course, they didn't come from that side, so it didn't matter. Instead, the opposite effect happened. When it went down, you immediately ran over to check. And they were moving up the whole time, not knowing the UAV, the UAV deactivated it at that moment, coincidentally. So it actually helped them even more. <clears throat> what side was the UAV on? It was on, it was the, on the side. It was on the spaceport side. Okay. So the other thing I'll say about the, the vantage points is you did a good job running back and forth checking each side, but you never checked your back right flank. Now if you run to the right toward the lower city area, toward the citadel lower city area, if you rotate all the way around, behind you is the power plant, right? Right. There is a path around the side of the power plant over toward the spawn point, and then up behind the hill behind you guys. They could have come all the way up that hill and behind you and while I watched you cover. You might have looked when I wasn't watching you guys because I was bouncing back and forth between teams, but I never actually saw you like really check that ramp. I, I did check it. I looked at that direction, and I went back there, and I decided it was pretty unlikely. It is very unlikely, but it's good to check it periodically because, as you saw, the got um not the goss berserk and razor came right down by the power point. Uh huh. Instead of running down that city street, which is really like a shooting lane for for your yeah. team, they could have gone an extra city block or two around the side and come up that ramp and been in an even stronger position. And to be honest, I was watching the whole time they did that. You guys would never have seen them if they did that. They would just suddenly be there. So that's just, that's really the only critique I've got on that end. Um, I, otherwise, I think you guys did fine. Studio, you're a little slow to change position when they started pushing, and so you weren't able to get any real hits in. You got one one shot in before they got close. Yeah, I went to uh, Heat Vision and saw the Hellbringer through some of the broke down buildings. That's why I swung wide to the left so I could dodge him as he came around to the right. Well, that was very well played. Take the, uh, take the crab head on. That was well played. Studio was out of position for most of the engagement there. Um, the only thing I can say is while it's good to keep your field of view in front of you, it's also good to move. Um, if Berserks and them did have long range weapons, you would have been out in the open and a good target for them to hit. 
On the other side, leaving Degas to only cover everything means that he has to constantly move and cover and it increases the likelihood that he might miss something. Two sets of eyes are always better than one. So my advice is when I'm in that situation, have everybody scouting, everybody moving. You might have one guy on what I would call overwatch scanning a certain area like the most likely paths, but everybody else is circulating and checking because you want as many pairs of eyes out there as you can in case one guy misses it. Does that make sense? It sure does. All right, any questions, comments, disagreements, um, thoughts? Nope. Okay. Who wants to see me wail on berserks? <laughs> you may try. I'll give you a shoulder to cry on when you die. You gonna what? I'll give you a shoulder to cry on when you die. Wait, wait, class, you bring berserks. I'll match it. Ah, <sighs> heavy. Of course it's heavy. What shall I bring today? What shall I bring? Does anybody want the spectator spots? They're both open. Yeah, I might as well, since I ain't playing, right? You guys can play, you can shoot each other up, whatever. Me and Berserks are gonna go fight first, and then you guys are free to kill each other all you want. Up to y'all. Oh, okay. I just don't know if anybody wants the little camera to like go swooping around the field. <laughs> can I bring my assault? Yeah, bring whatever you guys want. Me and Berserks are both just going to bring heavies. Berserks, meet in the middle in the stone circle. Stone circle? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, is this going to be a brawl? It can be whatever. We can hunt each other. We can brawl. I don't know. Up to you. Do you want to hunt or do you want to brawl? Uh, Actually, if we do stone circle, I need to change my back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to change my back, too. What do you think? Oh, uh, we can brawl. I don't care. Up to you. Just quick. Alright, I'll run a mega have run in a while. Actually, I'm not even sure this is skilled out. I think it is. I hope it is. <laughs> if not, this will be a short brawl. <laughs> This isn't gonna be good. One sec. Is that a mech? Actually, I don't know if I've consumables on this mech. Alright, I'm bringing that. Nope, I do. Alright, I'm set. Ready. Woo, stone circle! Do they have a countdown or shoot as soon as we get there? Um, I'll just shoot as soon as we see each other. How's that sound? That works. Head for the stone circle. We shoot at each other. One of us dies. Just keep Do we there. have to be in the stone circle? I just say we run for the stone circle and the moment we see each other we start shooting. How's that sound? <sighs> I picked the wrong mech then. <laughs> Alright, stone circle. We both get in the stone circle and at studio's signal we fire. How's that sound? Back to back, back, to uh, back. Remoff style or what? Back, back to back, Remoff style, studio gives the signal. Sound good? Works for me. You brought a boom hammer. Who makes it? What did you <laughs> You brought a boom hammer, didn't you? Sensors online. Weapons online. <laughs> You're too quiet. <laughs> you brought a boom hammer. Ah, I'm so toast. Command all warriors on the surface. I need to make it. Boom hammer's pretty awesome. Show no mercy. Yes, it is. Doing again, so is this man. 20%. Good to fire. Alrighty. So, 
so Stone Circles, Fox 6, Fox 7, right? Yep, we'll go back to back. Just do it, can get the signal, and we'll wail on each other. This is where we should that have the next run off. We should do the run off in the Stone Circle, back to back. Everybody else can stand on the hill and watch. Or on the That'll be interesting. You get really good vantage point. It's a natural natural fighting arena, and it's got cover, so it's not just out in the open. You know what I mean? Have all the spectators line up on the Citadel and watch, and have someone role play selling beer and peanuts. Exactly. They can stand on the Citadel, or they can stand over in the upper city, and they can look down and watch. The others can fight in the middle, and then that way they've also got some cover, and it's in a natural stadium. I, I'm going to suggest that they'll see. You ready for a little sibling rivalry? <laughs> a little bit of brotherly love. Target acquired. Oh my goodness, really? <laughs> this is going to be interesting. That's funny. Nose to nose, then we turn around. Alright. I just okay, need to get over degrees. there so I can watch. I'm facing the Echo 7 number. You should be facing that Golf 6 number. Sound good? Yep. Alright, you ready? Ready. Studio, get the word. Go! Snout sticking out of the water, let's get a shark poking his head out the boom. I was like, oh, I'm next to him, never mind. <laughs> That's actually kind of cool, Burst Earth. The way your mech fell over, it looked like a shark had like, pushed up out of the water and then just sank back down into it, jaw style. That's kind of neat. I'm glad you're amused. That was a good fight. I thought you had to. I would have, but I had just an instant of lag. You know, was I was. Just an instant of lag, I missed you with a full alpha. I saw you missed that one shot, I was like, Ooh, that was lucky. Although, to be honest, I was already twisting your shield. It was like, you could not, I could not have, you would have fallen right into it. Yeah, I was already yeah. twisting your shield, though, so I'm not sure it would have made a difference. It might have, though. It's hard to say since it didn't happen. Well, it would at least caught your right torso, twisting to the to your left. 10-4. I almost feel bad for Razor. He's getting whaled on by these guys. Two versus one. Target Mr. Goss will have the revenge. <laughs> it's his <laughs> studio. <laughs> Good fight! I was not expecting a Timberwolf Burster, that caught me completely by surprise. That's what I was going for. That's why I hid behind the rock until uh, until I knew you were right there. Well played. Just gonna throw that extra psych out factor in there. Honestly, when I saw the LB10, I was like, oh shoot, he's got the advantage because my medium pulse have to have face time. I was like, this is gonna be ugly. You didn't have... Um, yeah, I realized uh, too late, right when you snatched off my right side, that I was feeding you the, the wrong side. I was going for your right torso because it looked like that. I know. I, I knew that's what you're doing, and I was shielding with it, and realized that I needed to shield my left side instead. Yep. That was a fun fight. I enjoyed that. Oh, by the way, you guys know that Solaris is coming out, right? Yeah, yeah that's gonna be awesome. There's gonna be one v ones and two v twos, and, you, and it's just gonna be what we basically just did. All the training nights gonna be that. Yeah, it's gonna be, be exciting. Stadiums. It's gonna be fun when that comes out. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so much fun. And they're bringing out bolt-ons. It's going to be bolt-on stuff for your mech. So you can get helmets and weird-looking stuff on your mech as well. I'm really, really hoping they bring out a specialized bolt-on for the Atlas only. And it's a chain of commando skulls that it wears around its neck, like a necklace. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> be I would buy that in a heartbeat. All right, that concludes training night, guys.
Any last minute questions, comments, thoughts? No. No. No, not really. Is it, I mean, do you guys have any certain day that you guys actually play or? Um, it's Helter Skelter, to be honest. Because we're casual, people just log in whenever they have the time. Some days there's like 12 people on, sometimes it's a ghost town. We well, used to be quite a bit more days. organized, but some people got night shift jobs. Uh, yeah. One guy got a job that keeps them away a lot. And, uh, most active players got put on a tugboat and works for like 20 days. Of yeah, time, that's him. <laughs> so and we never see him anymore. I had a, I've had a busy uh, semester, so I'll be active again coming up after Her Christmas. Berserk is returning. Blackout is getting more active, so he'll be disappearing a little bit. Um, I mean, more active in real life. He's got some responsibilities. He's starting college. He'll start becoming more scarce, but Berserk will be coming back, which is good. Um, a lot of our guys just, a lot of them, coincidentally and independently of each other, just had a lot of real life stuff come up that kind of hit them. So our our nucleus of players that kind of held everything together is has shrunk, and we're kind of in a rebuilding stage, if that makes sense. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just noticed like on the forums that there was different things for different squads or whatever you want lances we used to be actually huge we had like over 100 players and we were gigantic and what happened was when the clans came out a lot of people got frustrated some left and then after that there were a lot of changes the pgi made over time people got frustrated and burned out and we kind of shrunk down to our core nucleus of really active players the the dozen or two dozen that were active and supporting the unit financially and everything the whole time and that was enough, really. We had people on every night. We often had 12 mans, but like I said, the problem was a bunch of our guys just coincidentally had issues. One guy had family medical issues. Another guy, actually three of them had different job issues that came up, different job shifts or whatever. Uh, one guy had internet woes, another financial. I mean, it's just, you go down the list, everything just hit within like a three month period across half of our guys. And some have trickled back in. Most are of popping in the post and say, hey, I'm still here, I'm just still working through issues, and they just haven't come back yet. I'm trying to okay. become a little more active. I got, I'm semi-active now, partly because I play the game so much, I'm a little burned out on it, but also partly because I got Berserk's twisting my arm into getting Fallout 4, and I kind of got sucked into that game. It's very <laughs> Yeah, he still has yet to, yet to find Diamond City. Uh, it's, it's like, I've got the whole north half of the map to do first. Yeah, you got a lot of story plot to do, too. <laughs> you go all uh, over the map. You're an explorer, story huh? plot. You told me there's, like, no story plot. It's, like, a really, really fast storyline. So, I'm like, I'm going to go ahead and explore. Well, if the story plot's all you do, you can have a very fast story. But you have to do some exploring, because you need better weapons. I'm playing yeah. the game like it's Battleship. Instead of like A1, A2, it's like Grid 1, Grid 2, and I'm exploring grid by grid. <laughs> looking, for, looking for everything it's I can find. It's killing me. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing it partly to show Berserks, too. Well, I'm actually, speaking of games, um, I'm actually going to swap over to Ghost Recon Wildlands. A couple of our guys are playing that tonight. They've got a special... Oh, limited, really? I'll come join you. they got a special limited time promo where they released the Predator from the actual oh, Predator yeah. movies into the game. Yeah, me and a couple of buddies play that. Cool, you want to join us? I don't know how many are on, but we might be able to get uh, you going. I can't tonight. I got to get to bed. I got to work tomorrow. Okay, 10-4. I understand. I thought they were going to work tomorrow. I got to really tomorrow. Right? You're on Probably call, should have played here. I was like, both I dodged a bullet. <laughs> Though, I would like to point something out before everyone signs off. Yeah. Nightmare, as you pointed out, I have been virtually 100% absent from MechWarrior for the entire semester. Shame on you. Which is approximately a four-month period. Shame on and you. And I just about kicked your butt right there. You were saved by the lag. <laughs> you like to think that. Of course, we all know that older brothers secretly uh, love and want to nurture their siblings, their younger ones particularly. Well, yes, says the guy that, that enjoyed beating his younger sibling up with inflatable boxing gloves when they were younger. So, of course, <laughs> I would do these things for your for your benefit. I would I would almost throw the match. And like they all say, almost only counts in horse, horseshoes and hand grenades anyways. So, I mean, yeah, it's not a, like you almost beat me. I mean, you what, do you have, like, a beat guilt me. complex of beating me up when we were little? <laughs> <laughs> I don't recall that. I seem to remember you were excited, just as excited about the sock and boppers as I was. Up until you bloody my nose for the fourth time. <laughs> I can't help it. You kept getting back up. <laughs>